What's going on, everybody? My name is Zellbrand. Welcome back to yet another video. Today, we're reacting to some more SCP Foundation content. And today, we're checking out another SCP-001, one of which I had to relook at my channel to make sure I had never reacted to. And thankfully, this is not one I have seen, because I've reacted to a dozen or so SCP-001-related videos over the years, and I kind of keep tr lost, well, can't keep track of every single one. So after this video goes live, there should be a playlist of every single SCP video I have ever reacted to to this day. Or at least the ones that have gone public <laughs> as of right now, because I know I have a dozen or more uh, SCP related videos I had recorded and are not published at the mid time making of this video. But other than that, we're going to go ahead and get right into this one. This is SCP-001 UBU 7 Day Scream. And judging by the thumbnail, there's some sort of whale involved. But the whale could be misleading, as it do tends to come with SCP st stuff. So we're going to get right into this in three, two, one. Boom. Boom. On May Boom. 12, 2015, <laughs> well the town of Kangastock, oh, no. Greenland, was destroyed by a devastating four kiloton explosion, accompanied by a massive electromagnetic pulse. A oh. few survivors that made it through the incident alive described seeing a pale green light in the area at the time of the explosion. Shortly after, an OMKA class scenario, or oh. end of death scenario, began. Oh, I've never heard of this one before. Cellular life on Earth began to experience a regenerative effect regardless of injury or illness. In other words, nobody could die anymore. Oh. This resulted in intense worldwide panic in the face of the inexplicable occurrence. As the panic mounted, the O5 Council of the FCP Foundation held an emergency meeting in order to address the possibilities at hand. Meanwhile, civilians began reporting sightings of a gigantic, pale, white, humanoid monster rampaging through their cities and communities, wrecking havoc and violently attacking anyone and anything in its path. As the situation progressed okay, so the whale and worsened, does have something and the to reality do with it, but... of the end-of-death scenario began to set in, the SCP Foundation made the difficult decision to lift its veil of secrecy and reveal itself to the world. O5-1 made a statement to the UN regarding the reality of the worldwide anomaly, advising citizens to remain calm and await further instructions. Five days after the world learned the truth of the SCP Foundation, the Pale Monster arrived in St. John's, Newfoundland, where it was met by Mobile Task Force New 7 Hammerdown for what they hoped would be a- Okay, for the SCP Foundation to go live and go public about themselves means that the situation is completely out of their hand. This is something they can't conceal until they get amnestics into the war into the atmosphere or something like that because they've done that before quick fight and neutralization instead two years of devastating bloody combat ensued by july really? 4th 2590 90 percent of the task force personnel had been killed and regenerated an average of five times at this point, MTF New 7 abandoned the city of St. John, citing anomalously poor working conditions. After being held in place for two years, the monster was able to break through the defensive line and continue its rampage. On October 10th... Okay, so the monster is related to this can't-die scenario. So, how do you stop it, or how do you contain it? Or is this another one of those points in time where the Foundation abandons that reality and let it be destroyed and they all relocate somewhere else because they do have a tendency of doing that 2590 the scp foundation and the global occult coalition came together in an act of unprecedented cooperation okay, that's another thing they never Project worked together Beluga, dedicated to the goal of neutralizing the monster designated scp ubu and stopping its reign of terror but project beluga was unable to neutralize the entity before it reached columbus ohio on december 29 uh -oh. 2590. once it arrived in the city scp ubu began dedicating its time to a gruesome personal project what first it dug a two kilometer deep hole in the city center next okay that is not what i was expecting it to look like it looked like a whale it didn't look like a humanoid figure from the thumbnail Okay, that just completely threw me off. It gathered a like total said, of 2.9 million civilians, throwing them into the hole. After the hole was full, the entity leaped into the upper stratosphere, over and over again, stomping into the hole each time. When the people Making inside were pancakes? pulverized, the entity destroyed a large fountain, which it used as a cup and drank the resulting juices from the hole. 
This entire oh. process took roughly one year, and when it was finished, the entity appeared to grow bored with Columbus and moved to Lake Erie. Upon reaching Lake Erie, SCP-UBU trudged out into the water and began assaulting the cargo ship stock there. It began lifting ships up and throwing them out of the water, some flying high enough to exit Earth's gravitational pull altogether. Two of the ships were later spotted on the surface of the moon. This chaos and dis Well damn, this thing is pretty goddamn strong. Why have I never heard of this one before? Destruction continued for years and years, until June 10th, 2670. When SCP An entire UBU century was later at SCP Foundation Site Wait, they 70. When SCP UBU was contained at SCP Foundation Site They captured it. However, this containment only lasted for two minutes, at which point the entity escaped and made its way to New York City, where it was oh, found yeah, howling and it attempted to defile the long. Statue of Liberty. Several countries used their nuclear arsenals to attack SCP-UBU over the course of its rampage, until the Schenectady Agreement was signed on February 10, 2674, cementing an agreement between NATO powers, the Russian Federation, the People's Republic of China, and the Global Occult Coalition. All signatories agreed that due to the concerns around the environment, any additional nuclear strikes against the entity would be prohibited. After the signing was finished, SCP-UBU crashed the ceremony grabbing several lengths of rebar and 15 foreign dignitaries, which it used to construct itself a bead necklace. The next notable incident occurred okay. when SCP-UBU showed up at Site-19. That treaty must not have lasted long and probably went back to nuking it right away. Teen, interrupting a round of testing with SCP-AFF, a AFF. woman capable of turning matter into stone by speaking to it. SCP-UBU broke through the ceiling, crushing AFF beneath its weight. SCP-682, which was also present, approached the entity curiously, and SCP-UBU responded by angrily defecating and shouting at SCP-682 in gibberish. SCP-682 seemed to understand this vocalization and attacked ah. SCP-UBU, <laughs> demanding Never. to take back the insult. At this point, SCP-UBU slapped 682's cheek, causing 682 to let out a horrific scream. The slap left behind a glowing green mark, which spread over the entity of 682's body before breaking the bonds of its cells all at once, dissolving Wait. the reptile into a pool of toxic fluid. SCP-UBU then spent five minutes bathing in- Wait, 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 wait. Did it just destroy 682? Does he come back? Can he come back from this? Fluid while giggling. After finishing its bath, devouring the reconstituted SCP-AFF and screaming into the microphone for 20 minutes, SCP-UBU broke into armed containment area one- He killed him. He actually killed him. That's all it took? One slap and he was dead? What? 79 and swallowed SCP-2317 whole. Okay, on there March goes the devour. What is this SCP thing? SCP-UBU conducted an assault on Thaumiel class oh, SCP-2000, no, rendering it neutralized. Again, years of hell passed as Project Beluga struggled to come up with new methods that had not already been exhausted. Meanwhile, civilians did their best to find ways to cope with the state of the world. On March 25, 2750, former film star Nash DeGroot published The Zonk Manifesto. Hold on one second. Based around a simple... Okay, sorry, I was just answering a couple of messages. Let's continue. Simple principle. Life on Earth was no longer worth living consciously, and the only way formed was to enter an eternal coma through the combination of chemicals and guided meditation. This kick-started the social movement, the International Zonk. On June 24, 2790, Project Beluga forces managed to drive SCP-UBU into the Bay of Bengal, where it remained for three years, causing very little trouble aside from underwater seismic events. Meanwhile, the International Zong continued to grow, and one mass of adherents known as Cuddletopia reached its goal of 5 million residents. On June 10, 2793, SCP-UBU flung SCP-3000 out of the ocean leaving it beached really? on the soil of India. Several cities were destroyed in this process. The entity then spent a week pointing and laughing at the beached sea monster, before grabbing it by the tip of its tail and beginning to drag it across Asia. 
SCP-UBU continued carving a path through Asia, the wriggling SCP-3000 in tow, until it reached the Bering Strait. Then it began to cross the- This thing is just like a giant toddler running back and forth between the world and just causing havoc because it wants to. Also, two centuries have gone by by this point. Straight into Alaska, returning to North American territory once more. But it didn't stop there. Instead advancing toward South America until it and SCP-3000 arrived on the eastern coast of Brazil on August 29th, 2793. There it dragged its unfortunate charge back into the ocean once more, disappearing from sight. On August 30th, 2793, SCP-169 or the Leviathan uh -oh. emerged from the depths of the ocean. There are some reports that SCP-3000 had been tied around its neck, but these have not been confirmed. The Leviathan and SCP-UBU then entered into a lengthy battle that oh, carried on for several hundred years. After so much time had passed that witnesses could scarcely remember a time when it wasn't happening, the fight between SCP-UBU and SCP-169 came to a halt. Much as it, it had with SCP-682, SCP-UBU slapped SCP-169 across the face with such force that its cell bonds dissolved and it melted Again? into a puddle of fluid which was lost beneath the ocean waves. SCP-169 was reclassified, neutralized. December 11, 3020 marked the start of a 10-year period of inactivity. So over five, nearly over 500 years have passed by this point. The Leviathan is dead, 682 is dead, 3000 got dragged across the whole world by this point. And the SCP Foundation hasn't found a way to stop it. What the hell is this thing made of? The for SCP UBU. Ordinarily, one would expect this to come with a sense of relief. However, even in spite of the global immortality, the collateral damage from SCP UBU's centuries of carnage had rendered the surface of the Earth uninhabitable, with all land now underwater. The remains of human civilization persist on a single archipelago of floating cities constructed from ships and debris. Meanwhile, the international Zonk movement has persisted gaining more and more traction and popularity as conscious life became less and less bearable. An enormous floating Zonk pile consisting of international Zonk followers using anomalous methods to achieve the perfect Zonk began to form. Eventually, this pile earned the nickname New Zonkland. By May 28, 3028, the archipelago was abandoned and the 140 remaining conscious humans retreated to the SCP Foundation's SCPS Naismith. There they lived in relative safety for several months, until SCP-UBU was spotted in the water off the port bow of the Naismith on January 14, 3030. It emitted several sounds that witnesses described as mocking, before swimming off towards New Zonklin. In response to this reappearance after 10 years of inactivity, the O5 Council called an emergency meeting. The transcript for this meeting reads as follows. We haven't exhausted all of our anomalous options for neutralizing UBU. Where's the corn crake? We've been over since Lawrence. So I'm the corn cake in this mess is only going to- It is anchored 57 clicks due southeast. For why the hell did you tell him that? Well, friends, it seems the Omega K has had us up and about so long that our personalities have run out of fuel we were given from birth. In all likelihood, I mean, yeah. we'd see better professionalism and teamwork in New Zonkland. As a matter of fact, that's a good segue into what I was about to propose. And frankly, I hope you find the nicest, cleanest spots in the mass grave. Where are you going? That depends. Which way is southeast? At this point, <sighs> O5-11 left the room, presumably to track down the corncrake, leaving the remains of the O5 Council there, and leaving the remains of Project Beluga with the question of how to handle SCP-UBU. According to its official... I mean, SCP if their project was of any kind of success, they would have stopped it 500 years ago. So let's be real. It ain't working. Let's go at 0511. See where he's going with this. SCP Foundation file. Cake. SCP UBU is an extremely violent and hostile humanoid entity of unknown origin, which appeared in Greenland on May 12, 2588. It displays anomalous physical strength and speed, as well as reality bending capabilities and the emission of regenerative lambda waves linked to the ongoing end of death scenario. 
The appearance of SCP-UBU and the start of the end of death scenario coincided with several additional phenomena. There was a mass loss of function for all the objects operated by the Three Moons Initiative. The Three Moons Initiative was an extra-dimensional human organization based in SCP-2922-C, or the afterlife known as Corbenic. This organization okay. was founded 14,000 years ago with the purpose of establishing a human colony in the afterlife and has long maintained a peace treaty with the SCP Foundation, SCP-2922 a method of communication that allowed a human mind to make calls to any pre-established phone number, ceased all functions. Next, the extra-dimensional space known as the Wanderer's Library, a magical archive of all yes, the knowledge from all known library. worlds, and every book that has ever been written, will be written, and several that have not and will not exist, was severed from Earth. When oh, the, the connection was lost? pressed the serpent's hand for answers, a representative answered that irreconcilable security concerns regarding Earth had come up and forced them to make this decision. A representative of Marshall, Carter, and Dark Limited somehow gained access okay, to the them. personal contact information of the O5 Council's members and used this information to reach out to them with a business offer. The company is ordinarily on unfriendly terms with the SCP Foundation due to their conflicting interests, namely Marshall Carter and Dark's interests in acquiring and selling anomalous items, entities, and experiences to the highest bidder. However, in this case, Why have I never the heard company's of these representative before? approached O5 Council members with a mixture of politeness and desperation, begging the SCP Foundation to purchase large amounts of the company's <laughs> stock. The forest known as SCP-4000 lost all of its anomalous properties all at once, Investigation revealed only really? a small parchment note in the area's entryway, which read, Good luck. One of the most perplexing and disconcerting phenomenon that occurred concurrently with SCP-UBU's first appearance was what happened to SCP-3008, the Eleven. Infinite Ikea. Though this sort of thing should have been impossible, the Infinite Ikea was anomalously purchased by some unknown entity. The Ikea branding was stricken from the building, and it was converted into an emergency shelter. All of these occurrences combined to serve as a warning. Something big is coming. And indeed, it was. SCP-UBU. It appears to be impervious to most forms. So it was a tall tale sign of something that was coming, and nobody had a true response of how to actually defeat it. So this is like the end of the ropes. We're watching an SK class scenario right now. End of the world. Through the UBU. Forms of damage, including blunt force trauma, heavy caliber machine gun fire, temperatures up to 1600 degrees Kelvin, artillery fire, and direct energy discharge from other anomalies. It did express some discomfort when exposed to severe simultaneous direct nuclear strikes, but it was not affected beyond that. The only recorded instance of lasting damage to SCP UBU was on August 14, 2784, in which the entity bit its left thumb seemingly for no reason other than curiosity. After biting its thumb, the entity screamed for seven days straight, then entered into a month-long ah, crying nine. fit. Thirty years and fourteen days later, the thumb had completely healed. SCP-UBU stands at a height of 4.3 meters. One exact That's measure tall. of its weight is unknown. Attempts at measurement during its brief time in containment showed that its weight is at least 15,399 kilograms. Wow. Its exact anatomical composition is unknown. But a superficial examination of the entity indicates that its body shape resembles that of a large androgynous humanoid, covered in hairless white skin similar in texture to that of a dolphin or small whale. The entity has no eyes, ears, or nostrils, but seems to still possess the ability to see, hear, and smell. Its only visible sensory organ, aside from its skin, is its 0.5 meter wide mouth, humanoid in nature, with a prehensile tongue of unknown length. On its lower body, it has no apparent features, aside from a cloaca that it uses to dispose of waste. SCP-UBU is prone to vocalizations, mainly screaming, laughing, and babbling but it does not appear to understand speech in any known language, nor does it seem to be attempting to communicate with anyone it encounters. Its primary interest appears to be destruction and causing as much of it as possible. It will attack anything that it can get its hands on, but seems to show a particular preference for attacking and consuming human beings in large populous areas, such as cities. Its demeanor is both sadistic and childlike, and it has been seen playing with its victims for hours before moving on to a new target. Due to its regenerative effect present in SCP-UBU's vicinity, 
It is incapable of causing permanent damage to any living thing. Oh. And seems to have no greater motivation beyond causing fear and pain. SCP-UBU is classified as Tiamat, meaning that it cannot yeah. be reasonably contained at this time, with the resources that the Foundation has. Therefore, the focus has shifted from containment to neutralization, which is ongoing via Project Beluga. Any and all non-critical resources will be funneled into Project Beluga as neutralization of SCP-UBU is a top priority. Additional information on neutralization efforts is restricted and may only be accessed by members of Project Beluga. But in the end, it won't be Project Beluga that defeats this monstrous creature. No. It will be the staunch efforts of one extremely dedicated researcher. That went in a direction I was not at all expecting this video to really go. I was expecting a whale. I was not expecting a humanoid entity, at least that it looked like from the thumbnail. And it seems like there's a continuation of this, but I'll have to take a look at the SCP channel and see if I could find it so I can continue this story. Or if it hasn't been made, I'll keep an eye out for it. But I'm assuming it's already made. So, with that being said, this was definitely an interesting one. And I've noticed this trend lately with all the STP videos I'm reacting to. This might come out at a much later date, but I may or may not have said it in some of the previous ones that might may come out before this. Um, there have been new classifications and new call signs and things that I have never heard of in the past that are currently coming out. Were these recent additions added to the foundation? Or am I just not never seen them before until now? But other than that, if you guys can answer that question, let, please tell me. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys enjoy today's SCP reaction. Like and subscribe all that stuff, guys. And I have plenty more SCP stuff to come out in the future over the next couple months. Because there is plenty more stuff to come out. And I will see you in the next reaction video. Bye.